What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Four Podcast. In person with me today in studio, my good buddy Danny on Ghost Town Street. How you doing, man? How's it going? You know, it's uh, it's been a week, but uh, it's oh, Friday yeah. as we're recording this. Yeah, it's definitely been a week. It has. It yeah, has. I think the big thing is auditions. <laughs> yeah, right. Auditions is something we are definitely going to talk about today. For sure. Uh, we'll talk about your little history on, on Haunt and, and how you got into it and all that fun stuff. Again, uh, I want to apologize before we even go forward about the uh, background noise you'll hear. Uh, it is very hot in my studio. And oh, we, yeah. got, we got lights on us. So uh, <laughs> it makes it even hotter. Therefore, I am not going to have my guest uh, sitting in heat because that's not right. And I don't want to sit in heat because I don't like the heat. Um, <laughs> we are both big boys. <laughs> we're both big, big people. So uh, the heat is, uh, is our enemy. So if you hear in the background more on towards uh, uh, Danny's mic, you'll, you'll hear the faint background of the air conditioning. I do apologize. He's actually sitting right next to it. But uh, we're not suffering in the heat. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's that California life, man. It's either it's either hot or it's not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Except you know, like three weeks ago, for some reason, I just couldn't decide. It's like it just, no, it's not. Yeah, no. I know. And that, that I was like week after week, I was like, the hell's going on? And then I had a vac- I just came back from vacation from Washington, and they, you thought it was bad here day by day. They go hour by hour. <laughs> it's either going to rain or be sunny, but it's always going to remain 60 degrees. So. Yeah, no, it's so weird. I mean, I I, I've moved away and, you know, kind of home. I'm from, born and raised in SoCal. Right. It's so weird how people have, you know, weather in the sense that, oh, you know, for the most part, it's like, oh, okay, we don't actually have to plan around weather. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. it might drizzle, you know, or it might rain, but really, what can you really not do out here because of the weather? Exactly. It sucks. <laughs> exactly. And, 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 you know, you look at it like, I, you go to a lot of these other states, and, and they have shit built around and prepared for weather conditions because they know <laughs> it rains all the time or something. Like, you know, I went to Florida, and it, it's got that. It's got that mixture of humidity with the rain. Yeah. And it rains every day there, usually. Yeah. Just about for like 20 minutes. Yeah. I went, uh, I just went this past season for, um, I finally got to go to HHN out there this What'd past year. I mean, COVID, you know, they had all the barriers up. So yeah. that kind of sucked because it took away some of the surprise from it. Right. I mean, the production value on it was, was amazing. Beautiful. Like, that was my it, first year going too, and I was like blown away by it. Yeah. I mean, I'd heard stuff, you know, right. and it's kind of like, You hear, like, unfortunately, you know, I feel like out here for HHN in Hollywood, Mm -hmm. people kind of like to talk smack about it because, you know, the the black walls. The black walls, The infamous black walls, you know. We're never getting away from it. Yeah. And so, you know, the fact that you hear that in Orlando, they, you know, they have the space, they have the time and resources, and they don't have the black walls. Yeah. Finally experienced it was like, oh, yeah, you know, production value is top notch. Oh, 100%. You know, it would have been great to have it without the barriers. Yeah. It was kind of surprising that they had more regulations in Florida. Right. For like actor safety, yeah. Than they did out here, yeah. That was a trip. I would, especially with 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 Universal Studios being in LA County. Which, if anyone knows what was going on in California during the pandemic uh, at the start, LA County was probably the most strictest because of how many people live in LA County. Yeah, alone. Like and they didn't have people. barriers up; they just had masks. Yeah. And then we had knots that, you know, is in Orange County. And, uh, They're like, nah, we're not doing that. Honestly, that was, like, a big struggle for me was thinking it? about coming back. Was like, it? Um, so, I guess, real quick history. I started in 2019. I've been in Ghost Town for two years. Right. Um, we can get into my audition process stuff later, but just because we were talking about COVID. Um, they messaged me, you know, hey, we're having Haunt again. Right. I'd already made plans, and I was kind of like, there's no way we're going to have Haunt this yeah. year, you know? It just seemed like it would be rushed. Yeah. And so when I got the email, they're like, oh, we're having Haunt again. I was like, okay, well, shit. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to... Uh, I don't want to be that guy, but considering how everything had been, you know, I was still trying to mentally recover from the year before. Right. I was like, you know what? Unless they, like, straight up tell me you're going to be in Ghost Town again, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And then they messaged me, they're all like... And I was like, and I already had plans to go on vacation. I was already going to go to, Hol- I mean, uh, to Orlando. Right. So I was like, you know what? And this is going to piss a lot of people off at this point. I was like, okay, you know what? If they can tell me I'm going to be in Ghost Town and they're cool with the fact that I'm going to take like two weeks off, then there's no reason why I can't do it. Exactly. I, I, I told them, 
all right, well, I can't work these two weeks. So I can work the rest of the run. I can work as many hours as you want. So I worked from opening to closing. Right. And, but I can't work these two weeks. So I'm going to be gone. Right. Okay, done. So, well, <sighs> fuck, I guess I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And that's kind of the way it's been for me, actually. It's been... Like, I'll put in, like, ridiculous things into the universe. I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen because I'm very much, yeah. you know, if something's meant to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So la for last year, okay, I'm going to take these two weeks off. I'm going on vacation, and I have to be in Ghost Town. Done. I was like, perfect. Well, shit. You got it I guess up. I was having to make a mask. <laughs> there you go. You have, like, two weeks. You're like, all right, here we go. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, I think it was a fun time this last year, especially my oh, first so year fun. going. It was the 30th anniversary. And for years, I had followed this event. Even before I started the channel, when I was a kid, Jack the Clown was the, the, the person that really turned me on to this event. Yeah. And, and to see not only he was going to be there, but all the icons in the last 30 years were there. Yeah. It's like I got everything I needed in 30 years put into one weekend for me and i was like this is perfect i get to see all the icons i get to see some originals i get to see their versions of ips i get to see their scare zones their shows i get to see it all and see what what it's all about finally i get my final opinions on it to see it in person oh uh, yeah no, it's and definitely. it was great i mean i was waking up every day going to the park during the day because i hadn't even been to the parks mm -hmm. and to go to islands of adventure and and universal studios orlando was just so much fun yeah, uh, no, to ride rides it, I've never been. I haven't been great. on in years, or never even been on. It was cool, dude. Velocicoaster. Oh, uh, Velocicoaster. It was so much fun, slapped, bro. I think it's hands down one of the best roller coasters I've ever ridden. I'm not in a my life. I'm not a roller coaster person. Me neither. And my my sister was the one that she's the adrenaline junkie. Right. She was like, you have to get on Velocicoaster with me. So I actually like spent time mentally preparing before going out there so i went to six flags for the first time last oh, year great. as well that's a good start yeah and i was like okay twisted colossus so much fun but i was like i was shitting myself like on yeah. the way up i was like dude it's heights i can't do heights i can't uh, do heights and and one movie fucked up roller coasters for me forever and that's final destination oh yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot of people i think i think so that's, yeah that's great it's safe to say yeah i know but it's definitely but i prepared and it's so good. I got on it like five times while I was there. Oh, Velocicoaster. Coast. I got on it once, but it was it was it was fun. Yeah, and no, for sure. So yeah, if you haven't been there, HHN Orlando is definitely worth the trip. It it's, is. Uh, it's very different, and I think uh, amongst the haunt community and whatnot, there's a lot of people that recognize that you have to at least make out the trip to see what the fuss is all about. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, it, it was good. Yeah, I had a great time. It was great. So. Let's talk about you though, man. I mean, what was the uh, the age of for you that that really uh, got you into haunt and horror the first time i went to haunt or any haunt it was at knots right. and i was in high school okay and the thing was prior to that when i was like a kid i was like maybe like six or seven right i saw the advertisements for actual uh for universal actually before yeah. they went uh before hhn went away right uh i'm 32 33 this year so nice. it gives you kind of an idea of the 33 timeline. years young yes <laughs> so um what happened was i told my mom uh, my dad like dad like the monster thing I, I remember the commercials they had like a dracula on the commercial or right. something they were like you know haunting <laughs> universal only like in the month of october and whatever and i really wanted to go it seemed cool and which is funny because i was i was a little i was a little wuss oh, I was so was I. I, I, i'm a big wuss <laughs> so my parents were kind of surprised and so my mom didn't want me to go but my dad actually took me out of school one day nice. to take me but what he didn't know was he didn't know that it was a nighttime thing. Right. So he spent all the money to take us to Universal during the day, and the haunt was at night. So we actually ended up not going. Oh. It was unfortunate. You know, he tried. It was probably one of the coolest things that my dad ever did. You know, it was still like, you know what? Thanks, Dad. I appreciate the thought. But I didn't get to go to my first haunt at 8. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. I went the first time when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. And actually... If I think about no, I went no. You're right. I went to Knotts one time when I was in high school. I remember uh, what was it like the layer of the vampire, like yeah, back yeah. when I used to have uh, the, the maze up there yeah. where the um, where the balloons are. Right. And so in terms of like monsters and stuff, that my first memory, which was great, um, I remember Spats. Yes. Of course, everyone knows Spats, but you know, I remember Spats before. I mean, I didn't know who he was. Right. So that was a trip. 
Uh, that guy's a freaking monster on yeah, those, on those pads, spats, bro. Yeah, everyone knows Spats. Spats is freaking, freaking crazy. And then uh, Loudmouth. Yeah. Those were, like, the two monsters that I recall seeing and that, you know, once I actually got involved with Haunt, I was like, oh, I know who those people are. Right. But, you know, like, a lot of things went went there. I, I saw sliding and thought it was, like, the coolest thing. Right. And then, you know, started trying to do research, come across TPA. Yep. TPA how many, is the man. How many people, you know. TPA is a TPA. huge inspiration for this channel, and I've told him that personally. Oh, yeah. I still don't know who it is. I probably run into whoever oh, that was. Oh, uh, it's the big homie Rick West. He runs. Uh, I mean, I've heard the name. I just, like, yeah. I can't picture a face. Like, I'm yeah, sure yeah. I've probably met the guy. I'm sure yeah. I've come, we've crossed paths, but I don't know who it is. But, you know, I remember being on TPA and being like a soccer and being like, oh, I kind of want to post something, but I want to sound lame because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> different times, you know, like, yeah. so I didn't want to be that guy. Right. But definitely, you know, kind of like looking at stuff and I was like, oh, it's so cool. There's like this whole culture behind it. And I was like, all right, cool. Went to college. Um, constantly went to haunt during college. You know, it became a thing where my birthday is in September, right. uh, late September. Right. So it was always like, oh, I'll try to get people to go to haunt knots. Yep, yep. You know, that was kind of a thing. And people That's thought it was kind of lame, but it was always a great. Trying to get great. that group together to have fun together, though. That's yeah, what it no, was. Exactly. Yeah, it became. It got to the point where I think the biggest group that ever went with me was like 15 people. Okay. And it was like, you know what, like. It's a great time, you know. It oh, was, yeah. It definitely built build up memories, but unfortunately, I would never be able to work. Right. You know. But, you know, it was a great time from, uh, was it 2008 to 2011 going. And then as I became an adult, it became more difficult. Right. And then um, it wasn't until 2019 uh, I'd moved away for a couple of years. I came back in 2016, 2017. I actually got injured. Really? So I broke my foot. I still have a non-union fracture there. Actually, uh, no, I am perfectly sound health. Anybody <laughs> that hears this, I actually am medically cleared. So no, you do not have to worry about anything. There you go. But I got injured. Uh, and uh, mentally, it was really taxing because um, non-union fracture means the bone never fused. Right. And um, a three-month injury turned into a year of me just being at home. Wow. I gained a bunch of weight. And then one day to another, literally, it was like I haven't worked in, uh, like, ten months. And then they're like, all right, you have to go back to work on Monday. Just throwing but, you back in the, the yeah. pool, huh? Yeah. And, it, I mean, it's hard. Oh, it is. And so that was a trip. No, I broke, I, I broke my ankle, and I was out for three months. And, and you're right, just sitting around. Yeah, it's not being able to do it. Everyone has to do everything for you. It's like you kind of feel useless. Yeah, no, you know? it's, it's like and it, especially for me, because at the time I was like really athletic. Right. So then it was like, OK, by the time I finally was able to um, like I was OK. Yeah. I had a gimpy foot and I was, you know, like 70 pounds heavier. And it was like, yeah, it's, this is weird. Yeah. So worked and I was supposed to take vacation. The vacation plans fell through. And then I just got really like. Bro, what the hell? I've been, I haven't been able to do shit for a year. I've been working for like nine months. At, like, I just need a reset. Mm -hmm. And this was around June. And I don't know why, for some reason, it just popped in my head. I was like, you know what? I, I always wanted to be a monster at Haunt. Like, I just want to try it. Like, I think auditions around this time. Right. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I'm just going to go audition. Yeah. Which was very weird because I don't even know how it popped into my head again. But it was just like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Oh. Yeah. So the application's open like a week later. Right. So like the timing happened to be perfect. Turn in my application and then it's like, okay, I guess I have to go into, um, it was, I guess at that time they had already done all the castings for the rehires. Right. And then it was like the open, like the open, open hire or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that there was like a bunch of people that were already set. And in my mind, I was like, you know what? Ghost Town was always like the big thing when I went. You know, mm -hmm. I want. I was with such a group, uh, big group of people that I would want to walk around in circles in Ghost Town, but people don't want to do that. You know, they're like, "Oh, we want to get on the rides and stuff." I'm like, "Dude, the rides are always here." That's why. That's my biggest <laughs> argument for any haunt. I'm like, the rides are here year round. The mazes are here for a season. Exactly. So, it was one of those things. I was like, "Dude, it's so cool." Like. It looks like a lot of fun to just, like, chase people around. Like, yeah. I don't want to just be in a little box, you know. No disrespect to the maze monsters. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of things to say about mazes. But, yeah, so um, 
in my mind, I'm like, dude, I would love to be in streets. Right. Really leading up to the interview, I mean, to the auditions, I start to hear things. And then when I get there, and granted, I don't know anybody at Haunt. Right. I'm just going in solo. I show up for my auditions. Everyone there that was there for Monsters was a lot younger than me. Okay. Because at this point, I was 30. You know, everyone's kind of like, you know, college. Yeah, there, 20s, Or maybe like high school. You know, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I'm already feeling the vibe. And I'm like, dude, I already feel like an old man. Like, what am I doing? So at this point, it's kind of like psyching me out a little bit. Right. And then I start hearing people talking. It's like, oh, yeah, like streets. Like, oh, if you get into, go like, nobody gets into Ghost Town. Like, everyone, Ghost Town's already full, you know? Like, uh, streets, like, it's impossible to get streets your first year. Right. Oh, uh, uh, basically, people were just saying stuff, and it was really psyching me out. Right. But now, right now, everyone auditions. Everyone has to audition this year. If you want to be a monster, let me tell you, just go out and try it. Because I went into my interview. I did my audition with, like, oh, we can't talk about the process. I did my audition, uh, and then I thought that I wasn't going to get anything, and they're like, okay, hey, I want you to try this out. I did what they told me to do, and then they tell me, well, I told them I wanted to be a clown. And the reason I said I wanted to be a clown was because I thought, okay, everyone keeps on mentioning Ghost Sounds Impossible, Ghost Sounds Impossible. I just want to be on streets. You know what? I'll be a clown. There so, oh, well, I, want be, I want to be a clown, you know? I, you I could be a clown. I'm funny. <laughs> you know, I'm zany. Uh, I honestly don't know if I could have been a clown. I would have probably gotten sent to a maze if I was a clown, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> now that, you know, I actually take more time to see what they do, I'm like, dude, those, those people are nuts. You're right. Like, it's, it's a different way of scaring, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they tell me, you know, we have an opening, and we think that you would be a great fit for Ghost Town. I had told myself that if I didn't get Ghost Town, I was just not going to do it. Right. It, that's what I had put into the universe. I was like, you know what? This is gonna. This is supposed to be fun for me. I don't need the money. Like, this is just supposed to be a reset for me. Right. If I don't get Ghost Town, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. I went in. I did my audition. I did. I went all out and got it. Got it. Boom. Boom. And that that was the start. And that's that the, was the start, the start of, of something for oh, you, yeah. huh? So... Going into, you know, Ghost Town, obviously this is this is a big name for, for the SoCal haunt scene. You know, yeah. Ghost Town, and it's starting to become worldwide. Sorry about the mic, by the way. I no, noticed it's all it, good. Keeps, it keeps turning, huh? Yeah. I, I if you ever, if it cuts out at some point, let me know because okay. I'm not noticing it. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm watching the bar, so I see if you're talking, and it's, it's coming out good so far. But. Okay, sounds good. Um, but Ghost Town is, is really noticed worldwide now. Yeah. Ghost Town, you know, when you think about the history of knots and, and, and overall the history of sliding, that's where sliding began. Yeah. That was something that, where people were just like, well, we're going to try something. It's a new scare tactic. It might work. It might not. Yeah. Little did we know it works a lot. But uh, <laughs> it, it's one of those, those areas where once you go in it, you just can't help but fanboy. Because so many people have came and gone that have made their names on here. That have easily changed the name, changed the story around, you know, their stories yeah. and, and added their stories in. So mm -hmm. many people have come and go that it's just, it's such an iconic zone. And, yeah. and they continue to evolutionize on that and introduce more. So well, going. I mean, just the history, dude. The history is just, <laughs> it's yeah. It's been there so there. long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been there since the beginning of Knots. Exactly. Um, when, you, when you looked, when you were going into your first day, like leading up towards that, did you feel at all nervous intimidated like shit like this is ghost town like okay I, I'm, I'm 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 stepping into this territory i don't know what to expect i i just want to say this real quick um everyone that wants to try scare acting just go out and do it yeah there are going to be sometimes that you'll hear things that people aren't being very positive about stuff but Dude, just go out and do it. Like, oh, it's so much fun and try not to listen to the negativity because there were some weird instances when, you know, people found out that I was a first year character and I was in Ghost Town. Right. And the thing is, I actually have a lot of, uh, I get a lot of uh, social anxiety. And people don't really know that because when they see me around, I tend to be very loud, very zany and whatnot, but that's kind of like a coping mechanism, kind of. It's like, okay, you know what? If I'm loud and people know I'm here, They'll talk to me or they'll just kind of ignore me. That's but exactly. Then it's exa like yeah. it's like the opposite of being super quiet because then people are like, why are you so quiet? Yeah. But then if you put out so much energy, it's just kind of like, okay, it kind of like 
pushes people away that way. So it's kind and of like a barrier thing. I feel like that's exactly what you said relates to how comedians deal with depression. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they do a lot of comedians that you see in the world, especially well-known ones, will go out and do comedy but have depression. Yeah. And that's their coping mechanism is comedy to make people laugh and make yeah. people. So, you know, there's a lot of similarities with that. Yeah, no, like, being completely honest, uh, like, being very, like, open with people, like, I suffer a lot from depression, and I oh, have yeah. a lot of, like, 100%, you know, so do I. it's it's a thing that people don't talk about as much yeah. when it's, like, you know, there's a lot of people that are always struggling with stuff, and for me, uh, the whole haunt thing became, like, an outlet, but, yeah, going, so, going back to the awkwardness, because you asked about the awkwardness, it was weird because as soon as I walked out, there's a bunch of people waiting outside the auditions, like trying to figure out where everyone is. Right. And uh, there was a gentleman from Forsaken Lake that he just looked at me because I was kind of like very meekly walking out of the room. He's like, you, what'd you get? I'm just like, I got ghost town. He's like, what'd you say? I said, I got ghost town. He's like, oh, bro, he got ghost town. And that was kind of when I actually realized like, like I had heard, but then it was like, oh, yeah, ghost town. Wait, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Like, hey, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Well, you got to add this person on Facebook, this person on Facebook. So the first ghost town person that I met was on Facebook was uh, uh, AJ. Okay. AJ is, uh, is- Yeah. The, yeah. The barber. The barber. Yes. And uh, then, you know, I got to add on the Facebook groups and then I started getting all the messages. And then the first moment of awkwardness was uh, there is a gathering that happens amongst the ghost town people prior to there's a party that happens. And I don't like going to parties when I don't know anyone. So it was one of those things where I battled back and forth with my uh, sister. I was telling her, you know, I really don't want to go to this party, but I should go because I don't know anybody. I don't want to just show up my first day Mm -hmm. and, like, really not know anybody. Right. It was a struggle back and forth to the point where I pulled over at a gas station and I went to get some beer because I didn't want to show up any-handed. Right. But I just stayed there for a while because I'm just like, dude, like, I'm already out here. I'm in the middle of nowhere and, like... (laughs) Finally go, party's in full swing. I walk into this huge house, a bunch of people, because it's not just current monsters, it's like, just ghost sound. Yeah. And I have no idea who the hell anybody is, and I'm just kind of standing there awkwardly. And so thank you to uh, Swerve, who was just on the show, and uh, somebody by the haunt name of Fireball. Okay. I appreciate you too, because they were the first people that kind of saw me just kind of saying, and they're like, Hi, what's your name? And I was like, thank you for talking to me because people are just staring at me and I don't know what to do. Yeah. So that was kind of the beginning. It was awkward. I had some uh, I had some speeches from some individuals, you know. I think they were meant to be encouraging, but some of them were, uh, you know, kind of scary because it's like, you know, you know what you're part of history now. <laughs> exactly. You have no idea that. what ghost town it is. Like people aspire to be where you are. Yeah. And you know that was just kind of like, okay, I, I get it. <laughs> this, this is kind of intense. This is supposed to be a like mental reset for me. I didn't really know what I was in for. Right. But that's when it kind of started dawning on me. And then um, once you know makeup and everything happened. I mean uh, costumes and everything happened. I didn't really start getting a feel for what it was going to be until we were finally in costumes. And then I realized, like, dude, like, this is pretty this intense. This is it. This is intense. So now we're leading towards the final hours of opening night. Or opening, yeah, opening night. Yeah. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to those that rope drop. How, how, how are you feeling mentally, mentally and physically going into this? Nervous. Obviously, everyone's nervous. Right. But, um... My thing was, again, I didn't really, I felt like a lot of the people that were there that were new, they kind of had somebody that was like, oh, they told them to come. Right. And that's how they were introduced and that's how they became uh, a part of, uh, you know, the family. Right. I didn't know anybody. So I was, I had to do pre-scare my first night. Okay. So that was cool because it was kind of like a warm up. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, the whole time I'm there and I'm just like, dude, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. Like... I've, I scared, like, at a haunted house in college, like, for, like, a night. Right. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm scary, but I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just try to go out there and just, you know, be as high energy as possible and see what happens. Right. You know, of course, people talk about, you know, my voice was gone within the first 30 minutes. Yep. Like, I lost my voice during rope drop the first yep. night. 
I remember them telling me, like, don't go into the crowds, like, because unless you know what you're doing, because, you know, it can get crazy if you go straight into the crowd. So what do I do? As soon as the robe drops, I, like, spart and run, like, into the crowd. I'm just like, I don't care. Uh, it was intense, but definitely um, that first um, that first hour and a half until, like, my, during that first shift, I learned everything that I did wrong because... Mm-hmm. I burned myself out within, within the first, the first hour, hour, half, half the first on. night. Wow. And then it was just like, well, fuck. And that's when it kind of hit me. Like, you know, people always talk about how intense it is. I didn't know. Yeah. Well, I learned after that first night. The second day, I seriously was like, why the fuck am I doing this? Like, I'm not going to, like, I'm calling, like, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm seriously done. Like, what the fuck just happened yesterday? Yeah, you know, and it's funny. I hear a lot of stories, too, that... uh some people just can't handle it uh, as far as their first weekend and they just quit. But that wasn't the case for you. I I'm stubborn for my um, I'm stubborn as to a fault. Like I, I don't want to just stop things. You know, right. I don't want to give up. Right. And so I was like, you know what? It's going to get better. But that first weekend was absolute fucking hell. Yeah. Like. It was so bad. Waking up I the had next the wrong, day, having had, to be sore. I had the wrong stuff. kind of shoes on. Right. You know, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know all the tips. You know, like, oh, you know what? You uh, use this for blisters. Uh, make sure you're drinking enough water because if not, you know, which is like obvious stuff, but you don't realize it when you're out there yeah, how much you're just, doing. Just, after you exit those gates, that all just leaves your head. You're just like, oh, I'm just exactly. going to have fun. And so it was definitely a learning experience. And that's pretty much the whole first year was just a learning experience. Um, I would only plan to do it for a year. Really? Yeah, because it was just one of those things like, okay, bucket list. But there were so many things that I learned throughout the first year mm-hmm. that I was like, that I wasn't able to like fully enjoy it because there were so many things that were on my mind. It was just a new thing that, you know, I'm just trying not to fuck up. Yeah. I, by the end of the first year, I was like, I have to come back because I want to do this. I didn't know we can bring a co- like you can, you're allowed to uh, design your costume. Right. You're allowed to make a character. I was like, dude, that's a, like I want to make a character. Like that sounds great. I didn't so, know that my first year, so I couldn't. I didn't do that. So your first year of Ghost Town, what was your character role assigned? Well, I was assigned. Uh, they gave me a werewolf mask. Okay. But the werewolf mask was really bad, so I said, okay. Well, they said I could get my own mask. I went out and I got a werewolf mask. Right. And I didn't know that because even at that point, I was like, OK, I can bring my own mask. Cool. I don't want to wear a dirty old mask. Yeah. Yeah. And this one looks better. But again, the lack of experience, the type of mask that I got, it's essentially like a ski mask and it has the mask on top of it. Like mm-hmm. it's stuck onto it. I have long hair. It chafed up the back of my neck because the ski mask is rubbing my right. hair against my neck the whole night. Yeah, yeah. And then also it's chafing up my face because it's just rubbing on my face the whole time. <sighs> you know, it was a horrible idea, but I didn't know any better because I'd never done it before. Right. But I also got a, a werewolf because they, they made me a werewolf, so I didn't know that I could switch it up if they were cool with it. And also, by the time that I figured, out, uh, figured it all out, it was just too late, you know? Right. So I was a werewolf. It was great. I had lots of fun with the other werewolves. Overall, great experience, obviously, because I came back. But um, going back to trying to encourage people, it's hard. It's weird. Uh, people that have been there for a while, check up on the people that don't know what they're doing. Uh, one of the guys that came in with me as a first year in Ghost Town, uh, he, he actually got demoted. Really? He got moved to a different section. Wow. And so the thing is that... Because now that has you thinking, like, I got to do, I got to give it 110% or yeah, else. Well, the thing is, that's just the movie for the whole game. Yeah. Uh, they assigned us, uh, it was a really good thing. They assigned, actually, they like, made, like, a video. Mm-hmm. So they go, see the veteran, and they're going to watch you, and they're going to give you advice. I do remember that in 2019. Yeah. So the funny thing was, my person, uh, you know, I love you. He knows who he is. Uh, he kind of watched me. He was just like, yeah, no, you're good. I was like, well, give me something. Yeah. He's like, no, you're good. I was like, that's not cool. Like, <laughs> I, like I'm, do, I'm doing things. Your I'm mind doing a thing. starts going a million different yeah. ways. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm doing a thing. 
I don't know what that thing is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what but I look I'm trying, like. I'm trying. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. a thing. Yeah. Exactly. And the funny thing is, I think that's what happened that made me, you know, it started kinking up my anxiety that first whole year because nobody was saying anything to me. Right. You know, nobody was saying anything bad, but nobody was saying anything good. So I was just like kind of like in limbo, but I'm like, okay, well, I'm still here. So I guess, you know, I must be doing something right. Right. When on the last night they hand us our hats, it's one of our things, you know, they had this, uh, our veteran hats and the veteran hat. Exactly. I got my rookie hat. Nice. And that's when it clicked on a few people. And I had a few people walk up to me. They're like, dude, when you said you were first year, we thought that you were like a first year, like streets. Like, we didn't realize that. No, I was like, no, dude, I've never done a hunt. Like, this is my first time ever putting on a costume. Like, yeah. I have no, I had no idea what the hell I've been doing for, like, this last month and a half. And then they were like, there's one person, I love you, uh, because I always remember the nice things, you know, that people say because I really suck at taking compliments and I get really, like, um, it starts to get over anxiety because I'm like, I don't know how to, like, take what people are telling me. Right. Uh, uh, she Wolf. Who is a big, she's a big sweetheart, but she can be very intimidating looking. And she was a werewolf too. So, you know, we interacted quite a bit right. on the streets. Um, she was, she was like, Dude, I had no idea that you were a first year monster. I thought that you were a first year. Right. Like, you fucking killed it. Like, good job. Very nice for her to say that, actually. Yeah, no, and honestly, that, like, it was like that, actually, I held on to that. It's like, dude, like, okay, like, so I feel a little bit validated. Like, I feel like I wasn't just wasting my time. And so that, you know, that felt really nice because, again, I had no idea what the hell I'm doing. Right. But get the call the next year and it's like, all right, now I know what I'm doing more. Uh, at least, you know, I'm not a complete beginner. Right. When they said, let's do this. First thing I did, contacted a mask maker. Shout out to Jesse. Jesse's you know who man. you are? Jesse's Jesse the man. is the man. He was on the streets with me, and he, you know, young guy, hey, I make masks. If you ever need a mask, let me know. And I told him, if I come back next year, I'm going to give you a call. So I did. Sweet. Um, and then that's when 2020 happened. 2020 happened, exactly. And I don't think we have to remind anyone what a year that was because I don't think anyone wants to remember that year. Exactly. So we're going to skip that because uh, – Unless you did something in 2020 that kept you active, or you just kind of took that year off to kind of... Oh, no. I just uh, work. I never worst, stopped working, never so, stopped you know, working. that COVID grind. Yeah, yeah. And then 2021 you know. comes around, though. This is the return of around. the haunts, the return of events, you know, pandemic starting to ease a little bit. It's still there, but it's, 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 it's starting to ease just a tad bit. Yeah. What were your thoughts going into this? You were like, okay... I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing this year. Yeah, so what happened was, it was like, okay, we're here. It's going to happen. I mentioned earlier, oh, you know what? If you give me this thing, I'm in. We're doing the most sound. So you returned from the vacation. Oh, no. Or did you vacation start? During the run. Okay, during the run. So you start the run. Um, how did the start for 2021 go for you compared to 2019? Oh, okay. So, new character, obviously. Yeah. Shout out to Jesse again. I had told him that, geez, I'm trying to remember what I even told him for the character. I went in there and I was like, all right, I want you to make a mask. He does my live cast. It's a great experience, you know. Seeing that, some, uh, you know, I'm a big practical effects type of guy. Oh, yeah. So, you know, watching all this behind the scenes stuff when you see all the actors. Especially, their live cast I think one of stuff the done. best movies to do practical effects, if I may add. The thing, hands down. Yes, John Carpenter's. The and thing. you know they're doing a re-release, right? They're yes, doing it in for movie the uh, what was it? The 45th anniversary, yes. right? Yeah, 45 years that movie. Yes. Yeah, and that's still. I think to this day that movie still holds up. Yeah, like it looks still looks beautiful. Well, I mean, any movie with practical effects. I'm sorry, like any movie with John Carpenter. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. But that's we, you know we could talk we could talk about that for a few hours. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah. definitely. Um. At some point, well, my character for this past year was uh, Festus, uh, the GTS gold miner. The gold miner, man. And that's so good, miner. too, especially with the Calico mine train and, you know, exactly. all that. It's, it's perfect. Exactly. And the thing was, it was completely Jesse's idea. <laughs> Shout out to Jesse. Shout out to Jesse. Honestly, um, definitely a person that I owe a lot to in the haunt community, Jesse. Of course, yeah, he makes my masks and whatnot, but honestly, he's been 
the Festus character I'm just running with this year, there's going to be a whole overhaul to the character, mm -hmm. which is funny because now I'm like hoping that I actually do get Ghost Town again because I'm right. going to have to re-audition in a couple weeks. Right. I'm hoping I do because I've already planned so much. The mask is uh, the mask was uh, the casting is going to be done this week. The sculpting was finished last night. Nice. But, yeah, there's going to be, like, a whole thing that I'm going to do for the character this year. This is Jesse's busy season, by the way, if yeah. anyone doesn't know. Yes. Anywhere from March all the way to freaking the very last minute of September. He makes a stupid amount of masks. Even during the season, sometimes he'll 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 touch people's things up or whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah I know. Jesse is one of the hardest working people at Knott's. And he's one of the sweetest people, too. Yes. Hands down. Yes. Most definitely. Yeah. Love you, Jesse. Uh, he, at some point when we were doing the mask, I forgot what direction I told him originally. I was like, you know what? This is what I want. Yeah. But the point is, he started making a mask, and I was actually, no, I just told him, do whatever you want to do. Because I didn't really know. And at some point when he's doing it, he's like, you know, you're kind of a big guy. I imagine you having a pickaxe. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Nice I told him, uh, I was like, all right, cool. I went out and got a pickaxe. And that's how the character kind of, like, started. So, he, uh, <laughs> a little bit behind the scenes of that, uh, pickaxe, when you went out to buy one, uh, what, how was it, uh, was it really heavy for you? Was it something that you found that was lightweight? It was a prop more? You're not allowed to have, again, uh, you know, Hot regulations say that you're not allowed to have anything that's not foam. Right. Okay. So I went out and I found a prop department out in the valley that does props. I believe they're called uh, New FX. Shout out to them. Okay. Good job. You guys make great stuff. Uh, they make a rusty axe, nice. a rusty pickaxe that's pretty pliable, but it's pretty dense foam. Right. And it looks like a real thing. That's like cool. if I have that thing and I throw it at you, you're gonna like. It. Oh yeah, especially at night with the lighting and the yeah. fog. Like you're not even you don't even know. What's oh yeah, going on. no, but it looks like it definitely looks like a real axe. Right. Very lightweight. So it was like, all right, I got my axe, and then it kind of became with. Uh, it was like, all right, well, what's gonna happen? I told Jesse that I really wanted to have a character that can talk because I was a werewolf the year before, so I wanted a big old grin. On my mask so that people could see my mouth. And because I just wanted to, you know, do a lot of mouth movements. Right. And with the whole axe thing, I was like, all right, well, you know what? I'm gold crazy. Because <laughs> I really like kind of being very psychotic. And, you know, it's kind of fun to just be kind of, like, you know, eh, kind of creepy like that. Yeah. And so I just was like, okay, this is kind of what I want. And that's how the character kind of started. The opening night. What I had the idea of what my character was going to be, absolutely bombed. <laughs> Went out the window? Or? Went out the window. <laughs> we, had, we had employee night right. this year. So we, uh, it last was kind year. Of like, that's kind of like your, your final dress rehearsal, if you will. Yes, mean. which was great because I, didn't figure, I found this out during you know, the soft opening, so to speak, right. that this character wasn't going to work, which was like a lot better than going out you know, general public and then be like, well, oh, this, this shit sucks. <laughs> I had an idea of what I imagined the character to be in my head and it didn't work. So it became, no. okay, I have to go, I have to figure this out by the end of the night. Right. And then what ended up working was really stupid to me <laughs> because I, I don't know why it occurred to me to just try this. And then when I realized that it was working, I was like, really? Yeah. I had all this badass stuff planned out and that's what worked. <laughs> yeah. And what that was, was it was the gold chant. I would okay. just go around and under my breath the whole time, just like gold, 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 gold. You'd be surprised. And it started irking people. Like I realized that, you know, people are looking straight at me, but it's making them feel uncomfortable. uncomfortable. And then it just made it so easy that any movement that I did, I just got to pop every time. Oh, I mean, and hands down, dude, that's, that, I mean, that scares the shit out of me, you know? Yeah. And then that's how the character was like, okay, that's the character. And that's what happened. And thus, a uh, new character, the minor was born, was born a new, yeah. a new, oh, uh, sorry. A new legend of Ghost Town was born. Yes. Man. I mean, that's that's so cool to hear this whole grand story for a, a comeback now. 
in the 2021 season, obviously things were a little bit different. Things were, we're in a post COVID world now. Yeah. Um, what was it like for you as far as, as going into it with that in the back of your head, obviously there's still this virus going around, but you know, it, you're still playing the game safe and everything. Honestly, it's, it's funny because I took the, I took the pandemic very seriously. Right. And, um, that was something that was in the back of my mind. But at the same time, I think I finally had reached that point with the, like that happened with a lot of people. I was like, you know what? I'm tired. I, mm -hmm. I need to do something. And that was a very risky thing for, for me to do. Right. Thankfully, you know, my health was great. I never got to, um, I got, I think I got slightly too dehydrated one night. So I did have to call off one night. Right. Because, you know, it was like, dude, I'm not going to be able to finish the run if I don't, if I go out and try to do this one more night, I need that rest. Yeah. But, um, thankfully, you know, everything turned out okay. Uh, I was worried for a while, but then it was like, you know what, if it happens, it happens. I just have to kind of try to live it at this point. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to be there though, because, um, I think everyone in general, the monsters were really excited to be back. Oh, the general public was excited. You want to you want to hear it from a guest point of view? That opening night, it was wild. Yeah, and I and I was expecting that energy. Yeah, and I got that energy plus some, and it was like to to be there opening night again. You know, mind you, this has been two years now. Yeah, and to be there again on opening night to, see, to feel that rope drop and to feel the energy from the monsters coming towards you. Oh, yeah. It, it's just a whole new thing, man. And, and, and yeah. it felt great. It, it felt great to be back. And I was the same as you. I was I was a little worried to be around so many people because I, too, was taking this very seriously. Yeah. And I still do take it seriously, especially me working at a school. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, so it, 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 you know, it had stuff in the back of your head of, you know, still things going on still got to be careful and, and yeah. just you know be mindful of other people um and and that that's think that's what was most important to me that's why i think for me well, i've always done this but it, it, it was a little bit better this year to do i'm always when i film or when i'm going to the event if i'm hanging out in zones i always like to chill off to the side yeah and i do that for the sole purpose of i don't want to get in your guys's way i don't want to get in the fan the you know the guests's way i don't want to cause anything and if i feel like i'm off to the side by myself yeah i can still observe everything get the footage that i need and not bother anybody yeah because i'm not the type of guy that uses lights like how we're using right now and we i've appreci seen those we appreciate that you oh, know 100 I, yeah. I, I i people I that walk around ghost town with their flashlights on their phone on and yeah it's, it's uh <laughs> if you want to if you want to learn more haunt tips to not do uh haunt tips with thrash i highly suggest it oh yes thrash. um but no, I, 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 I was, you know, I, so that gave me the opportunity to separate myself yeah. from the general, you know, public yeah. um, and, and just kind of be off to the side in my own little bubble, if you will. Yeah, for um, sure. With my with the people that I was with. But the vibe was great, though. The vibe was amazing. And that, right. and that was across the board to everywhere I went. Yeah, no, it was um, it definitely made me really inspired to want to come back this year, obviously, you know. Yeah, man. Like this year. The energy's just turned up already. It's like right. the fact that I'm already in the process of finalizing my mask, and I don't even know if I'm going to be in the zone yet, right. which might be, I mean, maybe I'm being a little bit, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm confident. I got. Oh, 100%. I, 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 we have a character that we put together that fits the zone perfectly. It would be foolish not to bring him back. There you go. <laughs> Dude, so, uh, you know, talking about that going into the future, um, now – Obviously, I respect ba boundaries and guidelines and, and whatnot, so there's only so much you could talk about. Yeah. I know um, it, this is pretty pretty much public out there for a lot of the fans and a lot of the community. Um, audition applications finally went out. Yes. A lot of people have been submitting. A lot of people have been getting appointments. A lot of people, you know, have been getting their applications. Yeah. Uh, you're one of them. Yes. Uh, we had talked about this. Uh, and you're trying, hopefully, this is a whole new audition process this year yeah. compared to what it's been in the previous years of Knots. Um so your goal is trying to get back on Ghost Town. Yes. Um, do you, would, now you have this character set in stone. Uh, this year, is this year we're going to see a, a whole new version of the character if you, if you do get on Ghost Town? Or are we going to see a whole new, we're going to see more things added to the character this year? It's an evolution of the character. Right. Because it started off as the deranged gold miner. But the thing is, um, 
I need a reason to be doing things. Right. Like, that's just the way my brain works. Uh, I did take a little bit of drama back in the day. Uh, I appreciate the process, you know, that people have. Yeah. And for my thing is, you know, you need a motivate. You, you need to have a reason as to why you're doing something, you know? 100%. So in my mind, you know, I started making this whole backstory for the character that has something in the works, and that's how I'm going to try to unveil the character this year once everything's finalized, and hopefully I'm back in Ghost Town. If not, you know, scrap and try again next year, I guess. Right. But um, it's it, be, it started evolving because some people overheard me talking to Thrash about uh, what my motivator was for my character, and it was like, I'm not dead. Yeah. That, my I did, that's not, true. My, my, character, my character's, character's not, dead. not dead. Yeah, your character's... <laughs> Well, alive, it's just... Is no, 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 I mean, my character, Fest is the gold miner, is not dead. Oh, he's not dead. Yeah, because everyone, the ghouls and demons and everyone, you know, everyone's supposed to be the living dead. I'm yeah. not dead. You're dead. You're not dead. You're, I am you're not still, dead. You're still, you just maybe, would you say your character is, because of all the shit he's seen, is maybe just crazy? Yeah, but the thing is, this year, we're taking an evolution of that, and... Shout out to Jesse because as soon as I told him, he like knew exactly what he's gonna do. And um, once everything's set in stone, I could I could send you a little something, and you know you could do the unveil if you want. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a thing. Like uh, I'm really excited because it's finally you know it's just building on it, and now I'm excited to hopefully get out there and show it to people because now I know where my mind is. I know what. I want what movements I want the character to do, but then also I really do have everything flushed out. So I know how I want to interact with everything, you know? Yeah. Because, uh, last year it was really weird because I didn't really know how I wanted my interactions to be with other monsters. Yeah. And that was different too, because last year I ran alone Right. the year before, uh, 2019, I actually had a scare partner. Right. And that was really funny too. Shout out to, uh, you know, where hyena, <laughs> AKA rollout, <laughs> Uh, the burrito bandit. <laughs> um, Mike, uh, Michael, get, uh, Michael Guerra. Right. He was a first year ghost town character too, like me. We were, so we bonded because of that, oh, but he just awesome. randomly started following me around one day. He was like, all right, cool. Like, let's watch each other's backs. And then he's like, oh, I don't know. What should, what do you think I should do? I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know i've never done this before either <laughs> why are you asking me bro i'm yeah. still trying to figure my stuff out yeah so it was re it was a really funny thing it worked great uh for uh the werewolf thing because he was a werewolf too he was right. um i was more of like a traditional werewolf he was more of a like cowboy he was the werewolf cowboy right you know he was more humanoid but i guess he felt really comfortable being around me in case something happened but it was really weird for me because i couldn't focus on him and try to do my job. Right. So it became this thing where he was like, you know what? I'm just, you know, you're the nucleus and, you know, I'm your little electron. I'm just going to be going around in circles and hovering around you. And it worked really well for us our first year because I was just walking around doing my thing. And the next thing I know is someone to my left is just freaking the fuck out because he's there. And I'm like, all right, cool. Then just keep on doing my thing. <laughs> so it worked out really well. And it was a, uh, it was fun because, you know, that helped me get through it. You know, yeah, uh, it's nice having somebody that, you know, we were going, th we were both starting in the same spot, but then that was different because like I said, coming to last year, running on my own, um, I was usually, I really like hanging out near Ghost Rider. Yeah. You know, that stretch that goes to where the All mazes the are. All the way to gypsy camp. Exactly. Yeah. So that's not the most traversed area. Right. And so I liked messing with people in the VIP line for Ghost Rider. I would just hover around that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I swear it became the Festus show there. Um, so I didn't really interact with too many monsters. And then when I did, I wasn't really too sure about how I was supposed to react to them. Mm-hmm. It's all flushed out now. I know exactly what I'm supposed to react with them. There you go. And so, it, you know, it's that process of discovering what you're supposed to do or what you want to do. That's the biggest fun thing, you know. That's the most fun thing to do. I think it is, and I think that's a good. I think that's a good little teaser right there to to hopefully give some some of the the audience this year. If you do get back on Ghost Town, that's yeah. uh, that's the funnest thing right there. And let's oh, see, yeah. let's see what happens to a lot of you guys this year. That, yeah, that no, it's gonna to be fun. Event. Um, that's awesome, dude. I, 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 it's cool to hear your journey and it's cool to hear what you have overcome and, and how you have succeeded going forward. Yeah. Um, and, and things that you figured out and you're still, you're still trying to figure out which, you know, 
it, it really brings the uh, the human aspect out of you. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah, for and sure. It really is is just telling you like I'm still I'm still figuring things out, and yeah. I haven't figured everything out, but I'm getting there. Yeah. And I'm still trying to evolve and 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 see what I can do with this. For sure. Um. So I liked I liked hearing that, and it's very honestly very motivational because I think a lot of people struggle and go through the same thing yeah. of they don't know what to do they don't know how to do this yeah be good to each other we're all scared we're all scary people and we're trying we should try to help each other out yeah be positive you know because yeah that's that's the big thing try to be positive you know i have a lot of people that i have to thank for this last year uh shout out to uh malik the vampire malik the vampire because uh he he had a lot of very nice inspirational things to say to me this year and it really helped me out through the run uh you know um it's nice to try something not be sure if it's working and then have somebody be able to like tell me if i'm going in the right direction right so thank you to him thank you to thrash you know you need to go uh, see his band on sunday right i'm sorry you need to go see his band on sunday uh i'm trying to i have to see if i can get work off but i yeah, will be there I know about it i will be there yes Check them out. Check them out. Performing at Chain Reaction this Sunday. Yes, yes. Yeah, hopefully, I don't know when this is coming out, but, you know, if not. Well, you know. okay. <laughs> this will probably be coming out after the show. So if you guys uh, missed out, you guys missed out. But check out Reminiscence on uh, on Instagram. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so, actually, he gave me a haunt name this year. Uh, Malik did. Uh, because I don't have a haunt name, actually, on this jersey. There's no, there's no name on the back. And... Um, the thing is, it's going to be quite controversial, so I'm not even sure if I'm going to use it because it's meaningful to me because, you know, I respect him a lot as a character. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing him in the past. Right. He's a really nice guy. And, and, you know, kind of like that process of this year. Yeah. But the name belonged to somebody at some point. Right. And, unfortunately, that person is no longer with us. Right. And so I know that it will be very controversial among some people if I decide to take on that moniker, that name. So that's why I'm kind of uh, trying to figure it out if I'm going to use it or not. Because, again, it's meaningful to me, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to upset too many people if I start using that name, you know. Right. But uh, if not, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, like I said, shout out to Malik. He was great. And, uh, yeah, be nice to each other because that was really cool this year. Mm -hmm. I was more comfortable. I was very a lot more social backstage and talking to some of the Maze people. A lot of the maze people are a lot younger than me. Right. And they assume that I've been doing this for a really long time. And even and in, in reality, you're like, I've been, this is my second year. Bro. Exactly. Par- partially because I'm older, but then also because, you know, I'm in ghost town. So it's like, this guy's probably been here forever. And like, God knows what he's been doing. And I'm just like, nah, dude, I just came and auditioned. This is my second year. You've probably been doing this longer than I have. Yeah. Just go out there, rock out, and then, you know, you'll get there. Yeah. And that was, um, that inspired me to work harder, you know. 100%. Because having people realizing that now I'm in Ghost Town and now actually this year realizing that people are actually looking at me yeah. and having a character that people could actually pick out from the crowd. Right. It was like, oh, it's you're the pickaxe guy. <laughs> it's like, shit. OK, this feels <laughs> now. Now if you're in Lockwood, like, yeah. uh, why do you know who I am? You know, right. but at the same time, it's cool because it's like, OK, I have to people are watching. So the now I have to work that much now. harder. Yeah. Because people know who I am now. I, I was there, and it was the same year you started on Ghost Town when the She Wolf finally debuted. Yeah. And to hear the reactions of fans yes. that immediately fell in love with that character. Yes. And, and the person behind it who does that character, um, very talented. And, yes. And, and what she did with that character and, and how she brought that to life. Um, I would actually hang out with her a lot leading up to that to, to, to pick her brain on, on how she's been yeah. preparing for that character. And, and to hear the stories behind the scenes of, of that character is so fascinating. Yeah. And, and to see her go out and, and play that character, uh, very, very talented. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to see that character evolve even more in the future. Oh, definitely. Um, but no, I, 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 uh, same with you though, man. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the evolution of the minor, mm-hmm. and I feel like uh, we're just getting started with the story. I yeah, feel like no, there, most, most definitely. There's so much, especially leading up to the fiftieth, which is yes, not this which year is, but next year. Which is the goal. 
the goal. I already have the plans for the 50th. It's just about time and money, dude. Like, yeah. honestly, like, there's so much. That's something that people don't talk about uh, as much, I think. It's like, there's a lot of time and money that goes into this stuff, you know? Oh, I'm not, 100%. I'm not making, I mean, we don't make that much money during the run anyways, and most of that stuff just goes straight back into my costume and stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Something breaks, you got to fix it, you know? Something, yeah. something malfunctions, you got to go buy something for it, you know? Yeah, it's and then thing. you have to, you know, you have to compensate the people that are doing the work, you know, oh, and yeah. especially, well, the Hong community is very, like, artistic, you know. Obviously, you know, the what nature of conventions and everything. the nature of everything, you know, everyone's a very creative mind and everyone has their own side hustle thing going on. Right. And everyone's an artist. Everyone's very creative. And, you know, I try to support those people as much as I can. You know, I wish I had a fatter wallet to do that, but, you know, you got to, you know, help people out, you know, and have them doing their thing. And I respect that a lot that people, you know, yeah, have they're on their grind and they do what they got to do, you know? Yeah, man, it's 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 a lot of a lot of work to, to do this and a lot of uh, patience also. Yeah, most definitely. Um, but it's uh, the overall end result's always going to be golden, dude. I've always yeah. I've never been unimpressed with not scary farms since I started going. Yeah. I, I personally in my opinion think it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest haunt of all time. Yeah. Because of its history, because of what they continue to showcase every year, what, what they continue to bring to the table every year, mm -hmm. and, and the, the amazing talented people that continue to go work there every year. Yeah. It's honestly my favorite haunt. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I like other haunts, don't get me wrong. All these other haunts are great, but yeah. There's just nothing that compares to that feel for knots. Knots yeah. just has that style when you walk in. You're just like, this feels like haunt. This is haunt, yeah. and I and I'm already looking forward to this year. It's gonna be a great year. Um, but man, you got you. We we got a auditions rolling around pretty soon. So um, getting ready for that. Get ready for that. But I want to make an announcement for anyone who wants to try it out. Um, audition applications are live right now. So submit an application, go for an audition. Yes. Worst thing they can tell you is no. But yes. even then, that doesn't mean you suck. That doesn't mean any of that. That just means that they probably overbooked or they picked other people. That means just come back the next year and try it exactly. again. Just keep trying until you get in. You may start at a maze. You may get jumped right into the streets. You may be just like our friend Danny here who get, who got right into the streets and had to figure it all out. But it's not a bad thing because there are nice people like yeah. him that can guide you along and give you their stories and share their stories with you of how they got through it. Yes, I am not an expert. But if anybody needs help with something, I'm willing to help. Or I'll help find somebody that is more knowledgeable than I am. That's Any way to possible help. to get them in. That way they yeah, don't feel lost or that's, anything. That's the way it should be. You know, yeah. like... Um, because it's uh, the whole haunt season, the whole event, like the nature of the beast. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it's a job. Right. But at the same time, it's so much more to people. And I feel like it's more, it's it's very much an outlet to uh, kind of try to get people through the rest of the year. Damn. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I know for me personally, yeah. it, it, it is like therapy. You know, there's a lot of things that I can do that just kind of like let a lot of energy out that I can't normally let out throughout right. the year. And so. I've heard it, actually some people found this very therapeutic too. Doing yeah. It. So I think that I find it therapeutic just going to it because it's my it's my kind of happy place. You know, it's yeah. like a place I can go get away and just sit down and enjoy for the night. It's like it allows me to interact with people in a way that I wouldn't. I mean, well, obviously, I can't just walk up to a person like, you yeah. know, without a mask on. But I mean, oh, um, you can just people will think you're fucking weird. Exactly. <laughs> but it, I guess for me, it's like there's a little bit of um, you're in somebody's space, you know, and you're right. having you know you're having an intimate interaction with a person you know yeah and there's so much emotion that is you know shared during that thing because it's like okay you know what there's there's fear there's joy you know there's anger there's happiness there's so yep. many things that happen all at once and you're constantly and that's what you're constantly being exposed to throughout the entire night and especially for someone like me that gets social anxiety it's like you know I don't know if I would be able to interact with people in any other way at that level without a mask on. Right. So to kind of be able to do that is just kind of like, you know what, it kind of, I don't know, it is very therapeutic, you know? Oh, 100%, dude. Uh, but, yeah, anybody that wants to try it, get out there, just do it, you know? Do it, man. And, and, that, and that, that goes for any haunt, you know? If you want to go to Knott's, go to Knott's. If you want to go to Horror Nights, whatever's convenient yeah. to Horror you. Horror Nights is doing their auditions a couple weeks yeah. before Knott's. Yeah, and they, got, they put the whole uh, on their Twitter, They exactly what they're uh, kind of looking for. 
as far as audition process goes. So yeah. you get an idea of what to walk into. Um, other haunts will be popping up pretty soon doing auditions. So check it out. But and it doesn't matter. They always need small people, tall people, you know, anything. Yeah, man. There so, is a place for you in the haunt community. <laughs> Danny, I think uh, a good introduction to you, man, is, is this. And we're only getting started with your career right here in the haunt world. But uh, for those who want to keep up with your haunt world, where can they follow you at? Uh, I am on the gram. The gram. Yes, on the gram. Uh, GTS underscore gold. There you go. That is my monster page. Yeah. And then uh, I do have a photo page that I need to start uploading more stuff to. And that is... I have to look it up to make sure that I spell it correctly. <laughs> shows you, I shows sure you how that's, often. Yeah, I'm, I gotta make sure that's the right. I, I'm sorry. I feel like that's a generational thing for me. Like I'm just old enough that you know the new social media stuff is just kind of like lost <laughs> on me. I feel like people hit me up on the social media, and I need to do a better job of updating. But it's uh, gold underscore stills with a Z underscore kills is my photo page, and I'm gonna. I have to upload a bunch of stuff from last year that before this year starts because, you know, I do try to take pictures when I can. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of stories, uh, a lot of great times, a lot of great scares, and it's it's a good time. Oh, man, 100%. And, and the final question of the podcast, what's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> I have two favorite scares, one from first year, one from last uh, last year. My first year one, though... That one's the one that kind of um, was like, okay, this is I can do this. This is it's it's going down. Right. Uh, rope drop happened, and as everyone knows, you know, uh, for 2019 they roped off the entrance to Ghost Town. They would let people pass the first barrier into Ghost Town. Right. And they would stage them in front of. Uh, they had like a gallows set up. Yes, for the Sarah Marshall. Yes, right at the entrance of Fog Alley. Right. And so I would come in from Ghost Rider side. I wasn't coming down Fog Alley with all the other monsters. Mm -hmm. um, I would just spart and charge into the crowd and then just try to scare people as they're trying to rush in. Right. And so I met a group of uh, people right in front of, like, that flagpole area in front of, uh, like, at the very entrance um, to, like, where you see Fog Alley and you split off to the sides and whatnot. Right. Uh, so it was about, I think it was six people and um, college age. And there was this one Asian girl that was very obviously the one that was scared. <laughs> and I happened to pop up right in front of her. So as I did, she immediately ducks down into a ball and her head's down right so what do i do immediately drop down into a push-up position so i can be kind of like eye level with her because now she's on the ground and yeah, now yeah. i'm like kind of hovering over her and then of course virus comes out of nowhere and he starts oh. yelling at her and you know doing the virus thing the thunder and so, jug and the saw yeah, yeah so she's just not okay right Yep, yep. And her friends are, you know, laughing at her, and they start speaking to her, and they start saying her name, and they're speaking Japanese. Oh. I lived in Japan for two years. Really? Yes. Interesting. So, I'm not fluent in Japanese, but I know enough to mess with people. Right. As soon as I hear that, she's saying in Japanese, you know what, I'm scared, I'm scared, I want to go home. So what do I do? I heard her name because her friends say it, so I say her name in a very Japanese accent, she kind of looks up and I just say, I don't understand why you're scared, but no matter where you go, you're going to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she felt safe because it's like, okay, you know what? He can't understand what I'm saying. But when she realized that I could understand what she was saying, yeah, she absolutely fucking lost it. Lost it. Man. Like, boogers coming out like she's full-on panic attack yeah at that point i'm like oh shit maybe i did too much and i realized that my cast lead was like right there i'm not i was the first year i'm not supposed to be on the ground right i'm a fur uh, i'm a werewolf i'm not supposed to be talking i'm like shit i'm about to get ridden up this girl is just losing her crap I walk away and I'm just like, maybe she didn't see that it was me. Maybe it's like, it's, there's so many werewolves. This is another werewolf. I'm, she won't even know. <laughs> she won't even we know. We all blend in. She won't even know. Exactly. 
but I'm still around the area, kind of like hovering, doing my thing, but trying to keep an eye on it. Security comes and has to like pick her off the ground. <sighs> and they're like escorting her out. Like this girl is like- Traumatized. Shaking, like she can't move her legs. Wow. Right? And then as she's like being like carted away, I kind of walk up behind my scare lead, you know, and it's kind of like a comedy, you know, she's standing looking, we're not acknowledging each other, we're just kind of standing next to her and I'm like, am I in trouble? She's <laughs> like, no, I saw what you did. Go and do it again. <laughs> Got the okay. okay. But, you know, <laughs> that was like my first like, oh fuck scare. Yeah. It happened really early in the run. I think it was like second week. That's funny. But then that was like, okay, you know what? I can do this. Right. Fuck. That, that, oh, that was a high. That was great. That, and, I think that was honestly one of the funniest things I've ever. Yeah. And that's the first for the, the yeah. podcast, too. I've never heard anyone speak another language to someone. Yeah. And scare the shit out of them. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to tell you. I, I'm sorry. This other one, just because I have to share this story because people would get upset if I don't share this story. Right. My first year as well. Uh, Any time that I'm scaring, I'm not that tall. I'm tall-ish. I'm six foot on the dot. Right. But when I'm scaring, I'm definitely, I always have my neck down. Yeah. I definitely look a lot shorter than I am when I'm scaring because I'm always hunched over, like, a lot. Right. So when I stand up, I'm a good six inches taller than I normally am the way I'm normally walking around on the streets. Right. So uh, I was walking around uh, Ghost Rider, and I was trying to get the crowd when they're leaving the mazes area, you know? Right. And I walk up. I come out of the crowd as a werewolf, you know? in this woman's face yeah you know she's you know i it was a good scare reaction ah <laughs> right this woman was uh very blessed you know she was stacked okay right so what does this woman do she starts waving her hand she's like ah right proceeds to put her hands under one of her breasts and swings it upward, hits me right under the jaw. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a first. I've never even heard of that. Yes. So, because I'm, I'm pretty, like, I'm ducked down. You know, I'm still, like, in the, like, yeah. you know, stage. So I'm pretty low. So she's able to get, you know, it high enough that literally my head jolted back. Oh, my God. Her I boob don't... under the jaw. You got an under boob cut. Yeah, I got boob uppercutted. Okay? You got boob uppercutted. And so I get hit, and I'm just kind of like, what just happened? In your head, you know what happens, but at the same time, you're questioning as to what's I, I, happening. I'm still kind of like, appa- like I, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm like, they didn't prepare me at scare school, like, to what to do when you're like, cut it by a boob, so you know? I'm so shocked by that story right now. I've <laughs> yeah. never heard anything and, like that. And so the thing is, like, her husband's laughing, her friends are laughing. I can see some people on the side that saw what happened. They're just yeah. kind of like... And so I'm just kind of like in my werewolf pose. I'm just kind of like, I'm going to pull her away. You know, exit stage left because I don't know. Like I had to recompose myself. Yeah. And so I run into my cast lead as I'm exiting. You know, uh, he he doesn't work there anymore. I act very upset. I'm just like, I'm so upset. Oh my God, Danny, what's wrong? Like, did some of the guests do something? He was like, I was just assaulted. He was like, oh, my God, where are they? What did they do? I was like, I scared this woman. And when I scared her, she took one of her breasts and she smacked me in the face with it. And then the guy starts cackling, right? And obviously, you know, I'm kidding oh, that man. I'm upset, yeah. you know. I, I, I was just so shocked. And I try to play it very seriously. I'm just like... I don't appreciate the fact that you're t- you're laughing about this. I was just assaulted and you're laughing at me. He proceeds to laugh more. It was a great time. <laughs> but yeah, that was definitely a new one. That is a you just gave me two first stories ever <laughs> on this channel. Oh my god. Boob uppercut and talking to someone in their own language. So that was great. That was great. Oh, I don't know man. how Go ahead and share it. Why not? Last one. My most memorable scare from last year as the gold miner. I always go in for a scare if somebody's messing with one of the other talents. Right. Because, to be quite frank, not a violent person, but I'm a bigger guy. If somebody's messing with, I'd rather the guests mess with me because at least I'm a little bit. Intimidating. I can handle myself a little bit better than some other people probably could in that situation. Right. 
and you know ultimately I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So whenever I see somebody messing with another monster, I always go in for a scare, right? To at least get the attention off of them, right? Uh, somebody was messing with uh, uh, Candyman. And this is at Ghost Rider as well. There milk. was a kid. Yes, somebody was messing with Milk. And, you know, Milk doesn't talk, you know, so he's just trying to walk away. Right. So he was walking away, but this kid was, like, pretty much running to, like, try to keep up with him, right? And it's not – I say kid, but also he's old enough to know better. This kid's in high school. Yeah. He, he, he's probably closer to 18. Like, he was very clearly, you know, old enough. Right. And I'm just like, leave him alone. So I wa- started walking towards them to meet with them, right? Uh, people that saw me scare know that I like to wait. I like to uh, swing my axe very freely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm walking towards this kid in full stride, and I do the drag swing that I like to do. It's a drag uppercut. So I use my uh, I use my feet to create a spark. So it looks like I'm dragging my axe on the floor. Right. And then I just swing it and bring it all the way up above my head. So it's straight up uppercut. Right. I do it to this kid. Full My Bloody Valentine right there. Yes. He managed to turn his head right as I took the swing. So his instinct was he fell straight back onto his back on the floor. Oh, man. Because in his mind, that was he was trying to matrix my axe because he saw it. He saw his life flash before his eyes. I thought he was Neo, bro. Yes. And, of course, he just lands on his back, and I'm over him with my axe above, the, above my head. And right. And I'm looking down at him. I hear, an, uh, like I said, I like to linger in that area. So right. at that point, I'd been there for a good 15 minutes without leaving that general area. So, you know, people are watching. They're stuck in line with Ghost Rider, so they're just watching this guy go in circles, scaring people. Right. I hear an audible, ooh. <laughs> Because, like, I hear it from the gallery, you know, up top, yeah. you know, the Ghost Rider line. Yeah, yeah. And I get, like, a clap because people saw what oh, happened. Man. And this kid's just on the ground. You just hear the, oh. oh. And then you see Milk kind of come up. He does the, he does the Friday. Yeah. He does a, he, he gives the kid a raspberry, you know. Yep. And he walks away. <laughs> and that kid's just on the ground. He's just like, <laughs> Stand up my axe, walk away. That's hilarious. <laughs> but that man. was definitely. Uh, I the wish Neo. somebody could have filmed that because I could have just this kid just straight up, boom, on the ground. We call that we call that scare kids the Neo. <laughs> it's a great time. It's a great oh times. man, dude! So so much to look forward to this year, man, and I'm yes. looking forward to it. Should be a great time, but definitely you know, will be. We're gonna we're gonna see what's up. But uh, if you guys are new to the channel. Please hit that subscribe button, that bell notification you every time we put up a new video. Follow yes. us on social media, the Knights of Horror on Instagram and Knights of Horror on Twitter. I'm your host, Anthony. My guest today in studio, Danny, yes. aka the gold miner. Yes. And GTS. Goes shout down out. streets. Shout, shout out. All the monsters I said, but then also shout out to uh ROTN. Revenge R-O-T-N. of the Nerd. Yes. Revenge of the Bags. Nerd. Bags. 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 Are we talking about the bags I think we're talking about. I don't yeah, know like, what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> Love you, bags. You know I do. Um, with all that being said, we hope you guys had a great time today listening to some stories, man. And uh, we'll see you in the fog. Yes.